going on guys? I wanted to bring you guys a different kind of video today just because I've been wanting to sort of play with uh, different style videos basically. If you don't know who I am, my name is Spencer. I, uh, on this YouTube channel for the most part, I've been building this car right here. So go check out those videos if you haven't seen them. But uh, I sort of wanted to dive into like the world of just tools because I find it really interesting sort of the range between something real cheap like some from Harbor Freight versus something decent like this Milwaukee and I just wanted to talk to you guys on my thoughts about it uh, especially today what I consider is a good idea to buy from Harbor Freight and what I consider you should just buy from a name brand tool company now a lot of people are super negative and there's this big negative stigma against Harbor Freight because they're so cheap and their tools are generally shit however there's a lot of stuff that, in my opinion, is worth it to get from there, and there's a lot of stuff you should just completely stay away from. Now, when looking at their tools from a value standpoint, just from their cost, it's a no-brainer, okay? So, I've got this set of Blue Point, oh, sh Blue Point ratcheting wrenches. It's 12 wrenches, 8 through 19 millimeters. I think they're 80 teeth, 15 degree offset ratcheting with a switch to change the direction they ratchet, okay? On the other side, we've got a set of seven from Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh brand. Um, 72 teeth, no offset, no switch. So if you wanna switch the way it ratchets, you gotta turn the, ra the whole ratchet around. They both sorta of come with a storage set. They're both chintzy storage sets, so whatever. Let's look at the numbers though. Blue Point. 263 bucks from Snap-on for the set. You can get them for like just under 200 online. That puts them right around 1650 each. If you're looking at Harbor Freight, 22 bucks from Harbor Freight with their 20% coupon, which if you didn't know, you can use it on everything. So always use it. 1750, that makes these 250 a piece. That's a factor of almost uh, se seven to eight, you know, it's seven to eight times less expensive. So, I mean, no brainer, right? Sort of. I've used these for over a year now. Haven't had one break yet. However, um, they're starting to show their age. Sometimes they'll lock up and basically just become a normal box and wrench. They won't ratchet. Um, and there's no way to service them whatsoever. So, when you break them, they're broken, but they have a lifetime warranty. A lot of people don't realize that about Harbor Freight tools. The blue points are serviceable. Let's see if you can see that right there. So if you break them, typically they're gonna get repaired. You won't get uh, replacements. If you're using these to make your money every day, yeah, you can't go and have a tool break on you in the middle of a job. You need your tools to finish your job, so get some decent tools. However, people are afraid of buying used tools. Don't be. If you're on a budget, go buy name brand used tools. Don't buy them brand new, there's no point. They're gonna get scratched up, they're gonna get used. The warranty transfers anyways 90% of the time. So for the home gamers, that sort of thing, hell yeah, go crazy with the Harbor Freight ratchets because they're awesome. They've been killing it for how long I've used them, but you know, I've moved up in the world now, so to speak. All right, let's move on to something else. Electric impacts are something that I have, both from Harbor Freight and from a name brand, Milwaukee. They're both half inch drive. Um, Harbor Freight, 50 bucks. Milwaukee, right around 200. So it's about quarter the price. Just by holding them and looking at them, the build quality is like not even comparable. I mean. The Harbor Freight's got no over molding and whatever I mean, and that's all just stylish stuff, but the switches, the cone on the front, this one is uh, just aluminum versus this one is a painted some sort of alloy and super cheap and chintzy. Also the anvil on the end, this one has that horrible like lock ring style versus this one has a... Uh, pin, which is honestly a little bit too skookum because uh, sockets get stuck on it. The, all that doesn't matter if the Harbor Freight performs fine. However, it doesn't. It's 
complete garbage. I have only tried to use it a couple of times, but every single time I've tried to use it, it was not able to break anything loose. I, the whole point of an impact is to remove stuff that's stuck, right? Or tight, or where you don't want to use a breaker bar. It won't even do that. This thing, this thing is awesome. This thing, I, I've, I've actually never had this thing uh, not be able to remove something. I've pulled off, probably the biggest thing I had to remove was the gland nut off an air-cooled Volkswagen engine, and it just spun it right off after I'd struggled with breaker bars and you know, cheater bars and all sorts of stuff for like two days. So for stuff like this, when electric performance is actually a must, I would say go with the name brand, Avoid Harbor Freight. But in my opinion, that's not the case with all electric tools. If you guys watch my videos, you know I use a lot of angle grinders all the time, um, and I've got like four of them. I've got one Makita, old, worn out, still kills it and then I think I have three Chicago electric brand Harbor Freights and I use them probably honestly equal um, amount or close uh, the reason I have so many is so that I can run different style wheels on them and not have to swap them out all the time I can just go grab my other angle grinder this Makita is probably 20 years old and still doesn't ever skip a beat I've probably had the Harbor Freight ones for a year now, maybe a little more. Yeah, a little more, probably two. And these things have never skipped a beat for me either. I don't expect them to last as long as this Makita. However, these are around 15 bucks, and at that price, they're disposable. So if I break one, I'm not upset at all. I broke my $180 Makita grinder, and it didn't have a warranty, I'd be pretty darn upset. So what stuff is like for sure buy from Harbor Freight, don't buy the name brand stuff? In my opinion, the parts that don't have any moving parts, the tools that, uh, how do you say it, don't have any mechanical or physical attributes that really can get worn out, buy those from Harbor Freight. For example, magnets, welding magnets, these things are dirt cheap compared to the name brand ones, and they perform just as well. Why would you buy the name brand ones? An example of what you shouldn't buy from Harbor Freight, I'll go grab it. Sockets. Not all their sockets, they do have some decent cheap sockets. Their six point sockets are okay. It's hard to screw those up basically. Now these are 3 8 drive, 12 point sockets. These are garbage. They work for a while, and then uh, basically the metal is too soft, it deforms over time, and then they just strip bolts like crazy. Also, what is garbage in this are these Harbor Freight socket rails. You'd think it would be hard to screw those up, but they managed to do it. These things are too loose on the rail. Um, they bend too easily, and also, if it's like a little bit cold outside, these will snap in half when you try to put the sockets on or pull them off. I wanna look at one last thing that I have from a big name brand versus uh, Harbor Freight and compare them via price and stuff and quality. I've got a set of 29 drill bits from Harbor Freight. They're not the highest end ones. I think they've got a set that are like 50 bucks. These ones are 16 bucks for the set. Um, and then I've got a set of snap-on. They're old, but uh, snap-on drill bits. Also a set of 29. These are $290 for the set. So you're looking at 10 bucks a, a bit for the snap-on, and you're looking at 55 cents a bit uh, for Harbor Freight, which is a huge difference. I have both sets, and if I did it again, I would still have both sets. Here's my reasoning. I don't get upset if I break, lose, destroy, dull up any of these bits. However, they suck at drilling. So if I'm doing a job that requires me to destroy a drill bit, um, cut it in half to make it shorter, drill at a weird angle where it's gonna chew up part of the bit or whatever. There you go, I've got that. These ones, they're old as shit and they still work super well. So I'm pretty upset if I break one of these. I'm not gonna use these in a case where I need to damage it, essentially. I didn't pay for these myself, I got them handed down to me. It's hard to say if I would pay for these myself if I wanted another set. They're super nice and they work super well, but the price is pretty darn steep. However, the quality, um, 
is a huge jump. I don't know if it is a 20 times jump because that's what the price difference is, but it is very significant. So do I have like a vendetta against Harbor Freight? No, I love Harbor Freight. It's one of my favorite places to go because everything in there is what I love and everything is so darn cheap. If you look through this shop, I've got Harbor Freight littering the walls, littering my toolbox. I mean, st especially stuff like this, a speed square. Why would you buy a name brand one? This was like $3. I've got particle masks, which I know they're not full on dust masks. I have a real one as well for that, but for keeping dust, you know, normal big particles out of your face, that's perfect. They're like a dollar. Cut off wheels, flap discs, grinding discs. They're dirt cheap at Harbor Freight. It's hard to go wrong with that. So I have nothing against Harbor Freight. And in fact, I have more Harbor Freight tools than anything else because I'm cheap and I'm a kid. But there are definitely things that you need to avoid if you're shopping there. Look online for reviews, get firsthand experiences before you buy. I've made mistakes before. I have this five inch bench grinder here from Harbor Freight and it's garbage. It looks brand new because I haven't used it. On the other hand, my jack that I use every single day has never skipped a beat and isn't even leaking. If you're in the market for tools though and you want something quality, I think it's really smart to take a look at the used market. You can go on Craigslist and buy a set of used good made in USA Craftsman tools for the same price that you can find Harbor Freight brand new. Don't be a snob about buying tools used because there's no reason to, they're just tools. The whole game changes when you start using tools to make your money. However, anyone who uses tools to make th makes their money already understands this and doesn't really need this video. <laughs> Essentially, here's the summation. If you don't use tools all the time, Harbor Freight's okay. If you do use all the tools all the time, get something better. If you want something quality for cheap, buy name brand used. And if you need something that you don't want to care about, you don't have to take care of, you're not worried about breaking it, buy a Harbor Freight. Something like a set of drill bits, you're not really gonna be able to buy used name brand for the same cheapness that you could buy new at Harbor Freight. So in that case, get it at Harbor Freight. One last thing, any tools requiring precision or anything like that, do not buy a Harbor Freight. For example, like a multimeter, you're wasting your money. The whole point of a multimeter is to help you diagnose electrical issues. If you buy a cheap one, you don't know if the issue is coming from the car or if the issue is coming from the multimeter itself. Do yourself a favor, go buy a slightly nicer multimeter from Home Depot or whatever and use that. That's all I've got to rant about today guys, so thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know if you want me to do more of this style video or more sort of in-depth reviews on specific tools, whether they're from these name brand companies or from Harbor Freight. I'd love to hear your feedback. Make sure to hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and again, leave me a comment. I like talking to you guys. It's my favorite thing. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.